Hi, it's a lipstick gal. Let's talk about some new makeup releases. I'm just gonna be honest, the last couple of weeks I have been so busy with work and other stuff and it's almost the end of the school year that I just haven't been spending any time on Instagram, which is a blessing in a way, but then I also feel like I, I'm out of touch. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> And um, I find that I am very behind on what the latest and greatest is in new makeup releases. So I'm gonna pull up Trend Mood Instagram account and I will link it for you in the description box below. But let's talk about what's new and what's out there. I'm not gonna talk about absolutely everything on there. I think I'm only gonna talk about the things that kind of jump out to me, whether in a good way or a bad way. So the first thing that I notice is not really a release about a new product. It's just news that Bite Beauty is going out of business. Oh man, it makes me sad. I kind of understand why. I, I know that the last two years has been hard on a lot of beauty brands and we've lost some here and there. Um, but I never really felt like Bite really got their feet under them when they diversified to more than just lipsticks. When they were just doing lip products, lipsticks, lip glosses, lip liners, like that sort of stuff, I felt they were hitting it out of the park. Their last reformulation of a matte lipstick, I didn't like the formula. I mean, I have it, but I never reached for it. And everything's 50% off. So if you were looking to, you know, get your favorite shade of a favorite formula, now's the time to do it, but it just makes me sad. The one good news is if you like the Lip Lab, the place where you can go, like the brick and mortar place where you can go and create your own lipstick formula, lipstick shade, those are still staying around, for which I'm grateful because there's several of them um, around the globe. I never really picked up much of their makeup. It was only lip products. And I really felt like they should have stayed in that lane of this is what we know and love and do really well. It has to be hard to break into the makeup scene these days. There's just so much and to not just break in, but to really be successful is hard. I thought they made a mistake when they got rid of their amuse-bouche formula. And that's the formula that I fell in love with years ago and it just really made me sad. There is a new collection from Kiko Milano that really kind of caught my eye. And I don't know if it's the really beautiful kind of aqua blue packaging, whether it's the embossing on the product because the lipsticks and the powder products are gorgeous or whether it's their eyeshadow quads i've been loving a quad so much and this one really looks like it's similar packaging to charlotte tilbury i don't know there's a couple of things here that scream kind of charlotte dupe but let's talk about it so their new festival glow collection is already available um, they have blushes, they have bronzers, they have highlights. Those are all their powder products. Looks like they have two eyeshadow, du not duos, but quads. And the packaging really reminds me of Charlotte Tilbury with like, you know, the gold interior and the name right across the bottom. <laughs> I think that's really interesting. The other thing they have is they have a liquid highlight in a squeeze tube with a cushion on the end. And I'm like, who did it first is Charlotte. A lot of people are doing it. Flower Beauty is doing it. Beauty Pie is doing it. And now Kiko is doing it as well. There might be other brands, but those are the ones that instantly come to mind. Their cushion highlighter is $17. I, I know the one from Charlotte is a lot more expensive, but the one from Flower Beauty is actually what, just 13? So it's less expensive. And I feel like Flower has what, three shades? There's only one for this one. I don't know. I'd be curious to try it, but I don't know. Now, the one thing that really catches my eye is their lipsticks. So they have two different types of lipsticks in here, and I don't know anything about the brand. So maybe these are already formulas that they have, and these are just shades that are released either with this collection or are new and specific only to this collection. Their Make Me Queen lipsticks it sounds like it's a hydrating, glossy. They have three shades of that. Those are $12.99, and they have a no transfer matte lipstick with eight shades that is what, $15.99, $16 for what to me seems like a drugstore lipstick, that's a lot. I don't know, this definitely has my attention. I don't think I'm gonna buy it, but I'm intrigued and I will definitely be looking for reviews of this collection. Uma Beauty has relaunched their foundations and concealers and they're reformulating to remove the fragrance. That's really interesting to me. As I was looking through this post, um, it doesn't really say 
more than award-winning foundation and concealer are being repackaged into a deluxe packaging and relaunching fragrance free. So they're gonna upgrade their packaging and they're gonna take out the fragrance in both the concealer and the foundation, which is great. And then it says that the foundations come in 51 shades and six different formulas. And that's what I'm wondering is six formulas and a total of 51 shades? <laughs> or does each formula have 51 shades? I don't know, do you know? Let me know in the comments down below. But there are 19 shades of their Stay Woke Concealer. So the foundation is $39, the concealer is 25. I have tried the concealer before, but I didn't have the right shade. I picked the lightest shade that there was at the Ulta display, but what I didn't know is that Uma Beauty actually has lighter shades and was on my display, so my local Ulta doesn't carry like the full range of shades, which is kind of frustrating, but whatever, okay, okay. So let me know, are you picking this up right now? I've got too much foundation, too much concealer. I'm probably not gonna do this, but I'd be really intrigued to know more about this. Let me know what your thoughts are. Urban Decay is launching kind of smaller sized palettes. They have new additions to their Naked line. They have the Naked Sin, Naked Foxy, and Naked Half Baked. So these are six pan palettes. These are very much in line with what they've done in the past. You know, I'm seeing like Naked 3 with the Sin palette. I am definitely seeing some of their um, other ones like the Half Baked really reminds me of their, what's the one that was kind of all warmy tones? It wasn't the Toasted because that was the Tartlet one. But there was one and you'll remember which one it is. I just kind of quit falling for Urban Decay. I think the last time I bought an Urban Decay palette, when was it? been a while. I really, like Urban Decay used to be for me a really cutting edge brand, trying new things, new formulations, really like breaking the mold for uh, eyeshadow palettes when they came out with their Naked palette. Like that just like turned the world right on its head and, and changed the way we wore eyeshadow. But I really feel like it's been a while since I've really wanted to pick anything up from Urban Decay. And as I'm looking at these, I don't need these. I'm not excited by these at all. They're gonna be available on the 20th. If this is for you, if you are an Urban Decay fan, just know they have three new kind of smaller size palettes, or like the half size, because the original Naked palettes have 12 shades, these only have six. But I always like a smaller size palette, so I saw it, I was like, Wait. and then I was like, no, maybe not. <laughs> They're just not that exciting to me. MAC has a new collaboration with Stranger Things, and um, I was like, oh. But the truth is, none of this really calls to me. I love the show Stranger Things. I can't wait for season four to come out later this month. I'm delighted. The brush looks really beautiful, but I have so many brushes, I don't need that. Um, and I think the blushes look kind of interesting. I'd probably go for the more red toned one, but it might be too much for my fair skin. I don't know. I feel like I can firmly like skip all of this, but I don't know whether it's my age. You know, being 47, I'm no longer pulled in by a collaboration of something that I love with a makeup brand. I used to fall for that stuff all the time, not anymore. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, hmm, eh. The lip gloss looks interesting. Is it a lip glass? I'm not even sure what it is. It is a lip glass. Um, I love how shiny they are. And there's probably one or two shades in here that would really, you know, be fun for me. But the last time I tried a lip glass, it was too sticky. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've loved MAC products. I love this collaboration idea. I think that it's fun, but it's definitely not for me. This really kind of hit the makeup nostalgia button for me. Uh, it looks like Benefit Cosmetics is launching new blushes, not just new shades, but also new formulations. So they are about to have different finishes in their powder box blush. I used to love the box blushes. I remember when they used to come in those like six pan, you know, kind of larger palettes where you could have a whole bunch of them. I bought one maybe four years ago and I loved it. And you know, I, I feel like I'm kind of done with that now. I do still have some boxed products from Benefit in my collection. I have two of their highlights and their Hula Light, but everything else is gone. What's interesting is as I'm looking through here and I'm kind of zooming in, the only name that I remember from before is Dandelion. I used to have a Dandelion powder and everything else are like new names with the exception of the 
Hula, because they still have Hula Light, Hula Caramel, Hula, and Hula Toasted, and they still have Dandelion Twinkle, Cookie, and Tickle, like their highlights. They have three highlights. They have all four of their Hulas in different shades for skin tones, and then all of their box blushes. The only one that's still the same is Dandelion. That was like one of their original products, but and I'm wondering, is Peach in like Georgia? <laughs> I'm wondering if um, Java is like renamed for like a, a, a previous, I don't know if these are just renamed or are they all completely new shades, new formulations? I don't know. Now this isn't like tug at my nostalgia heartstrings enough to make me want to go out and get it. But if you're interested, um, it looks like they will be available not just in their regular box blush size, but also in a mini. So you don't have to commit to like the big size until you know whether you like it or not. So that's interesting. I'm probably gonna skip these, but it really kind of made me go, oh wait, I loved those, but it's been a long time. Talk about products that really tug on my like nostalgia heartstrings, ColourPop Super Shock. That was the first product they ever launched. And I remember having the shade Taco, which was like a pale, like matte blue. And I don't know why I bought that color, but it just looks so cool. I, I still have, um, I've repurchased multiple times certain shades that were like some of their first launches, like Millionaire. I wore it the other day in a video. Love that blush, but that's probably my fourth pot of Millionaire. So ColourPop's been around for eight years. They're celebrating their eighth anniversary in May. They have this special eight year kind of birthday vault of super shocks and they have a birthday shade that they include, I think with a $20 purchase or more with everything that you buy. Oh, hmm, I don't know. The one that has like the little eight imprinted on it, that one, it looks so beautiful to me, but the rest of them, they're, I love a super shock. I have a whole bunch of them in a little acrylic drawer over here and I keep them handy because sometimes I just want a fast, easy one shadow look. And out of all the things that I used to love from ColourPop, that is still one and the Super Shock highlights that are in my heart and I have repurchased in the last handful of years. Cause like three years ago, four years ago, I just kind of quit buying ColourPop altogether with the exception of Super Shock products. Those are my favorite, I don't know why. I love the way they feel, I love the way they apply, I love the way they wear. So part of me is like new Super Shocks, but I need more eyeshadow, like I need a hole in my head. So. Probably not, uh, I'm gonna say no, but maybe. All right, I saw this and I was like, what? Shantikai has this new Sunbeam Cheek and Eye Shade and the pan embossing is gorgeous. I love like the highlighter, clear acrylic packaging that it's in. I love everything about it except for the price because that one item is $82. Uh, I don't know. Shantikai, does high-end luxury makeup really well. But the one Shantikai product I have, I think I paid $84 for their blurring powder. It's too deep for my skin tone. Oh, I'm so sad. But it's beautiful and the formulation is lovely. But I don't know that I can justify paying 80 some odd dollars for one product. I mean, I guess I have in the past, but like Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette has 10 shadows in it. Natasha Denona has 15 or more shadows in it. I feel like I'm getting more than just one product at a time, even though it's all in one place. This is one product for $82. I don't know. This is a no for me, but I would love to know if you like Shantikai, convince me on why it's worth the price. I'd love to hear your thoughts. The next thing I saw that kind of surprised me, and this is already out and available, is a new kind of trio from Charlotte Tilbury. I love Charlotte Tilbury. I have so many Charlotte products. And I really feel like it's easy for me to like go, yes, I need that. <laughs> but this was like, um, oh, wait a minute. And I think it was the price because the idea is easy. And if it fits into your beauty routine, fantastic. But it was the price that killed me. Okay, so she has these new portable, refillable, quick and easy makeup kits. All right, so there's three things in here. You have a metallic easy eye wand you have a cheek wand and you have an easy highlighter. So you have kind of like a contour, a highlight and an eye shade. And I'm sure you could use these multiple places on the face, which is great. And it comes in this little like brown with rose gold, like detail on the front package that flips up and you have all of these little things perfectly lined up with a little pencil case and there's a mirror in there and that's great, but it's $75. <laughs> and I was like, 
$75 for three cream products. Mm, and I don't know, they look so small. Maybe they're the same amount of product you would get like maybe in a lipstick. And Charlotte's lipsticks are what, $34, $36 a piece? So maybe the price makes sense there. She already has kind of like a cream um, product for the eyes, but it's in pencil form, isn't it? Kind of like a chubby pencil. I don't know, this is, I like the idea and the ease and for someone who's on the go and that's greater for touch up. But the truth is I could not bring myself to spend $75 on a kit like this. I would make my own little kit and pull out my own little mirror and my own little bag that I zipped it all up in. I don't know. That was kind of like, no, not for me. Juvia's Place has a new Nubian Earth collection. Um, although I think this is beautiful, truth is none of these things are calling my name because I have all of those eye shades in other places. Um, I like the lipstick formula. The lip gloss formula is not my fave, but I don't feel like any of these shades are really calling to me. Um, but I, I hate to say this, but I'm kind of getting the feeling that Juvia's Place is kind of, they're getting into the same place that ColourPop does where they just keep putting out similar products. Cause this really reminds me of, was it the Warrior, the gold one? I don't know. Um, and it also kind of reminds me of like the original Nubian that had like all of the mats that came in the green packaging. Do you remember that? I don't know. I just kind of feel like this is not exciting. Maybe it's what people want. Maybe they're really wanting like warm neutrals, but it, it didn't excite and delight. So that's a no. All right, <laughs> I saw this and I was like, wait, what? So this is not a brand that I've ever purchased from. I don't know that it's in my future to purchase from Hip Dot, but they have a new collaboration, Hip Dot and Cup of Noodles. And looking at this, I know there is a huge like realm of people who love food related makeup collabs and cup of noodles growing up I was not allowed to eat that sort of stuff my mom would consider that you know a bad food choice <laughs> so um we ate like grape nuts and wheat checks for breakfast like as wheaty and whole grain as we could get my mom made um whole wheat bread she didn't even buy it she's like I want to make it like she was like a super uber health nut and I never, ever, ever had ramen until I was in college. I think I had my first cup of noodles at a friend's house in grade school. Um, and their mom was like, well, uh, what do you guys want? And she like, do you want mac and cheese? And she was talking craft mac and cheese. And I had never had that, like all of this stuff. And so this right here, the packaging makes me like feel like a kid and nostalgic and like hungry. <laughs> but the inside of the makeup, I guess it kind of makes sense, but mm, no. It looks like there is a lip and cheek product there. That definitely is not exciting to me at all. But the eyeshadow palette, it was just the whole cup of noodles. Um, and I was just like, oh, I want a cup of noodles, but I don't want this eyeshadow palette. ColourPop has a new Star Wars collab. They've done several before. They've done The Mandalorian, they've done The Child, they've done the Darth Vader one. This is just plain old Star Wars. And looking at the cover of the palette, it just brings back all the feels. I love Star Wars. I grew up in the late 70s, early 80s. And I remember when everybody had this lunchbox and was going to school with their little lunchbox and you could see, you know, Leia and Luke and just, you know, with the buns on the side of Leia's head. I was just like, oh, I, I love it. I love it. But I haven't bought a ColourPop eyeshadow palette, like a pressed eyeshadow palette in what, two years? No, I bought some last February and I was kind of, like sad trombone, disappointed. I don't know, but I feel like the colors in here are really accurate to the theme they're going for. You have an R2D2 kind of silver, you've got a gold C3PO color, you've got the rebel blue, you've got the empire red, you've got some really pretty, um, you know, the, the black for Darth Vader. I feel like the color story for the eyeshadow palette is spot on for the movie, but, hmm. I don't know. And I think it's only nostalgia that's making me go, oh, it's so cool because I, I know I'm not going to get this. Alicia Keys is launching makeup and this is part of the um, Key Soul Care line that she has. She wore some of these shades earlier this month to the Met Gala. There's a sheer flush cheek tint. It's $22. It's supposed to be creamy, moisturizing, non-sticky. 
And then they have their tinted lip balm with avocado oil for $18. They also have a clear brow gel for 15. So it's very much in keeping with her, you know, not wearing makeup for years and then transitioning back into makeup, really soft, really pretty, hardly anything. This is very on brand for Alicia and I think it's lovely. It just doesn't call me. I don't have to have any of these products. There's a couple more products I was interested in talking about. One of them kind of has me excited. And this is because I've loved this brand for a long time and I've been pretty loyal to this type of product that they make, and it's Lancome. They have a new mascara. It's their Le 8 Hypnose Volume Serum Mascara. Okay, so you know, if you've watched any of my videos, that I love Monsieur Big from Lancome. I love that. Before that, I used to love the Hypnose Star or the Hypnose Doll Eyes. Um, I, I really loved Lancome mascaras for a long time. I feel like I have tried every single mascara that Lancome has come out with since the late 80s. And I remember when everybody was head over heels for the Defenicils, I used to love that mascara. Um, I used to really enjoy their Edol mascara, but one thing I noticed is that since I've been working, I spend a lot of time looking down and my eyelashes touch right up in here. And I was getting transfer little gray dots that I'd never noticed before, but it's because I'm, you know, my, my work makes me do things differently now than I used to before. And I'm noticing that that mascara doesn't last all day on me and I do get some smudging. But this uh, Le 8 Heath No Serum is interesting. It says it is 91% black balm. It has eight amino acids. And this new generation formula intensifies the eyelash passage after passage for a sculptural volume, infinitely adjustable, nourishes and revitalizes day after day. So it's supposed to be a hydrating and the idea of it being a balm, I don't know. Is it gonna, is it gonna smear? Is it gonna transfer? Uh, I'm a little worried. They are also touting the fact that the tube is recyclable. The tube is glass. The wand and the cap are plastic. The double-sided brush is made from plant-based fiber. They're, I guess they're trying to be more ecologically minded. Hooray for that. But I'll just tell you, this looks interesting to me, but I don't know. And maybe it's the word balm that has me worried because <laughs> I want a mascara that's going to stay. But I've always loved Lancome mascaras. And I feel like out of a lot of luxury brands, they do mascara really well. And I've liked most of them. They Almost all of them work for me. Um, and even before I started this channel in like my uh, late 20s, early 30s, I always bought a Lancome mascara. I'd go every three months and get a new one. I loved it. So that's intri intriguing. Another thing that I saw that kind of made me go, oh, oh. Another Charlotte Tilbury product, she has a cream bronzer coming out. This is the Face and Body Cream Bronzer. It blurs, hydrates, improves the look of your skin every time you wear it with hyaluronic acid. And Sunshine Pro Vitamin D3, what does that mean? <laughs> it sounds like a lot of skincare talk to really like get you to think of wonderful things about the product, but is it just a cream bronzer? It's $55, looks like it comes in four shades, which is great, we're releasing a shade for a lot of people. There are gonna be options, it won't just be this or that, or maybe just this, like some brands do. Um, but I'm curious, this one is exciting, because I've been loving cream products so much. This kinda of caught my eye, but I don't know yet. This, I think, launches later this month. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the Foundation Tinted Moisture Balm from Jones Road Beauty. So Jones Road Beauty is the brand that Bobbi Brown started and it's a tinted moisturizer balm that meets traditional foundation and blends seamlessly into the skin. That sounds amazing. There's only 12 shades. I remember trying the one from L'Oreal where there's only eight shades and I was like, I don't know about this folks. 12 shades does not seem like a lot more and the lightest shade here, I don't know that it would work for me. I don't know, and maybe it's just the image that I'm looking at here on my phone. It looks a little, I don't know. The hard part is, is that Bobbi Brown is, you know, a very well-respected makeup artist. She knows a lot about beauty. She's been in it for so, so long, has created her namesake brand, sold it, and is now doing this. So I like that she's trying different things with Jones Road Beauty, and I like the idea of a balm foundation. I think those are really cool and exciting, but I don't know that there's a shade here for me, and only launching with 12 shades, and maybe because it's self-funded, you can't launch with everything. I know that Wayne Goss did that. He launched 12 shades. I just feel like I don't know. Maybe it's not quite enough. I'd have to see it in person, but I don't know 
other than their website, where can you get it? <laughs> Maybe there are some retailers, but are they all online retailers? I wanna go in in person and stick my finger in it and swatch it on my hand and go, oh yeah, that's too orange, or oh, that's too pink, or that's perfect, that would work great, and take a real look at it. So that's probably gonna be a no for me, but I love the idea of a balm foundation. If you have a favorite balm foundation, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know if any of these are on your list, ones I didn't talk about, or you're like, absolutely not. <laughs> let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.